rebellion kicked him out. Mm. What did he install in Eve? <clears throat> did your father really say this? So I encourage y'all, and Pastor Aaron Bell, I'm going to tell you this, a great book that I've seen people's lives changed in all five realms that I call five areas of their life. It's called Spiritual Slavery to Sonship. Oh, praise God. Praise it's God. by Jack and Tricia Frost. Oh. All right. Yeah. So I encourage you guys. I got videos on it. But I encourage you guys. We literally bought four cases of this book. And we've seen people's lives change financially, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And uh, I forgot the fifth one. Physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, mentally, mentally, literally. We've seen marriages restored. We've seen children come back to the fathers. Fathers come back to the sons. We've literally seen people physically get healed when they understand their alignment and sonship with the father. So I've been literally preaching on that for seven years. So it's key for us to do anything that we do to get that alignment right. Amen. To get that up. Because if not, you'll go and you'll do assignments, you'll go do that, but there'll always be something missing. Why is all the struggle that I've heard here in Florida is because they don't understand their relationship with the Father. Because once you have that down pat, guess what? You'll be able to work with your sister, your brother. It don't matter. Because you know it's for the purpose of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. See, it's a kingdom mindset. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the kingdom works violently. And we don't want to hear that stuff. Oh, we just want, oh, just love. That's all we want. That's, listen, God is going to judge. Yes, he's love. Jesus moved, was moved by compassion. But at the end of the day, he's going to judge us. And there's war going on. And if you have your Bibles or you have your phones or your Androids or whatever you got, in Ephesians chapter 2, chapter 6, and if you just turn there, we'll go ahead and uh, get things started. Why the military format? Why the style? Why that mindset? This is a question that we always, always get asked. And as soon as they mention SWAT, people start freaking out. They think, you know, we're going to go through Bud's training, nine, nine weeks. There's going to be sleep deprivation. Some of y'all may have had sleep deprivation and preparing. You know, they, they just start, instead of saying, this is different, let me see what God wants to do in this. They all of a sudden, that spirit of fear rises up, and all of a sudden, all the preconceived ideas come out. And I know some of you may have heard about how SWAT was. Okay? And it may have struck a fear nerve in you. At the end of the day, God did give us a spirit of fear. Amen. And we have to understand if God said we need to do SWAT and you get a call from the daughter of God to be a part of it, then you should honor, okay, God, I don't know what it's all, listen, I didn't know what it was all like me coming here either, but didn't mean that I needed to stop. Mm -hmm. Didn't mean that I needed to throw out 20 questions to find out. I didn't have to pray for four days and fast and all that to know. When you're connected already with the Holy Spirit and that's your lifestyle, when you hear something, it triggers in your spirit. Exactly. Because there's a unity, yeah. which is what we talk about, as one in the spirit because that's your lifestyle. Right. How many of you honestly and truly are constantly praying in tongues? I mean, constantly. All the time. That's how we should be. Right. Yes. Because I can hear you, but I'm also listening to the Spirit. It's two different things. Mm -hmm. Hearing is head knowledge. Listening brings revelation. Mm -hmm. Come on, say it again, Apostle. Hearing is head knowledge. Amen. 
Listening is revelation. Amen. What happens when you get revelation? You can activate it. Mm -hmm. You can walk it out. But again, it's understanding your walk with your daddy. Understanding that no matter what happens, and this is something else I believe has been lost, is the fear of the Lord. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So if we, we have a perception that the fear of the Lord is just awe and reverence. But listen, if you go to Psalms 139, it's beyond that. Mm. It's understanding no matter where you go, what you do, how you do it, and with who you with, he's there. Mm -hmm. He's there. So to me, that's the fear of the Lord. So for me not to walk with him, talk with him, not to be so close to him that if he turns and I'm not paying attention, I bump into him, there's a problem. Mm. And God is militant. If y'all didn't know, y'all gonna find out. He's got camouflage on. <laughs> hey, hey, come on now. That's how he rolls. Because he knows that there's remnants, there's sons and daughters that are walking the earth that he needs to watch over. So we have to understand, don't freak out because it's military. God's chosen you for such a time as this. You could have been born at any other time. But God chose for you to be alive for this. Okay? So, and it is a common question. My response is, I see that we are continuously in a spiritual battle. A spiritual war against the devil. And his word specifically says that we're in war. God says we're in a war. We're in a battle. And Satan is constantly... Look, just because you're sleeping and snoring at night... Don't mean he ain't at work. Amen. Mm -hmm. I get people constantly tell me, oh, well, I just put my armor on this morning. I'm saying, yo, you better thank God that you're still alive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because he's attacked at night. Look, I don't That's know right. about y'all. Right. I might go a little deep here. So just swing with me. There's times where literally astral projection happens in my house. Mm -hmm. So if I don't have my armor, guess what? They get to do whatever it is they yep. want to do. If I'm not guarded up at night, how, how am I going to stay alive to see the next day? So we have to understand that there is a continuous war and that the enemy is trying to kill you because he knows there's something about you that's a little different. He doesn't know all the details. He doesn't know all the details. Y'all need to understand that. Only God knows the end from the beginning. The devil doesn't. Because he can't even create anything. Because he's a created being. But we have the authority to speak something and it creates. Woo! Amen. So you guys that are here in Florida, begin to speak what God is speaking in heaven. Yes. How do you know? You got to go to heaven and get you something. Yes. And then you'll speak what he's speaking. You'll speak the mysteries that are being spoken over Florida. You'll find out the intel. Sometimes we get out there and we just, out there just friendly fire, shooting. Find out. Because God wants snipers. He wants pinpoint accuracy. And we have to go find out what is God's plan. Amen? Amen. Amen. And in that, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, and I'm going to read out of the Passion Translation, it says, your hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings. See, y'all keep thinking that it's we're fighting somebody in the natural. We've got to understand it's a spiritual battle. So when people raise up and they start acting some way, guess what? It's okay. That's you. I'm going to just stick with God. And they're going to have attitudes. Listen, there was a time you had an attitude. Yeah. Right? And sometimes we may still get an attitude. Because we ain't there yet, right? Right. So we have to understand that not everybody's going to agree with y'all's assignment. And it's okay. If you don't agree, that's fine. At least pray. We're brothers and sisters in Christ, and we should be uplifting one another. Okay? So, he goes on to say, but with the highest principalities... And authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. For they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world 
in bondage. We've been set apart. So we have to understand what is it that we're really battling? What are we really coming against? It's principalities and dark forces that are attempting to take over Florida and not allow revival to manifest. But here's what I'm going to give y'all. You are revival. Woo! You are revival. Mm -hmm. Again, because of the Holy Ghost residing on the inside of you. Listen, I heard a song at one time that they sang it and it was a, a holy visitation. I don't know if y'all ever heard that song. But my deal is I don't want the Holy Ghost to visit with me. I want a habitation. Amen. I want them to hang out. I want us to be able to bang it up together. And we have, but we have to create that. We have to create that atmosphere for him to stay. And if you don't create a place of habitation, why should he stay? Wow. He doesn't have the he doesn't have to stay. He wants to. Let me give you another, another revelation. God doesn't need y'all. But God wants y'all. That's the thing. God starts raising people up. And now they have the perception that God needs them. Listen, if he needed you, you would have been there in the beginning. <laughs> but none of us was in the beginning, were we? We're in the now. What's now? Y'all ready to write something down? Yeah. Now is new ordained warriors. Mm -hmm. You're the now. You. Amen. You're the ordained warriors to set Florida at a place where people can see the light of God. Hallelujah. You. But you have to choose to do it. It's going to cost you. Yes. There's a cost. There's things you, there's people you can't hang around with no more right now. You want to, they want to, but you can't. Because God is taking you to a place to bring freedom, freedom and bring wholeness and bring oneness. Verse 13 says, because of this, you must wear all the armor that God provides. So you're protected as you confront the slanderer. Understand that God specifically gave you his armor. I should have got one amen. Yeah, yeah, amen. That's all right. I, I, amen. That's all right. I'm not here to make you happy. I'm not here to make you like me either. I'm here to train you. We got to understand that God is willing to give us the very best to fight this battle. He gives us his best. And you've got to know what the best is for that day. Amen. In your time of intimacy is where you find the best that he has for that day. Because you can't use yesterday's weapon on today. That's right. right. you got to understand that. While we were at war, we couldn't take the same weapons all the time. There was times we had to get different style of weapons. They had to be heavier or they had to be more quieter. Why? So that we can get the enemy. Mm -hmm. And guess what? How we found out what kind of weapon we needed. We got intel. Mm -hmm. We went out. We did reconnaissance. We checked out the land. Who was there? What kind of animal was there? What was the terrain like? Mm -hmm. So they had a team that specifically went out before we ever got there. That's why we can't take credit for everything because there was someone who went before us. Mm -hmm. So when we understand that and we come under submission to a leader, that leader should set up a team to scout the land. We as host people of the land, that's what we did. We would always scout out before we moved the whole tribe because we had to know what was there, who was there prior, what, how was the animals moving, how did the grass grow, what kind of tree, what kind of protection, were we in a valley, were we on the hill? How was it? So we have to understand, we've got to know our enemy. we got to know what's stirring up in the land. So again, why this military format? Because the way we train. 
the way we process stuff. See, sometimes the leader may give you a plan and y'all may be executing, everything's going good and all of a sudden something comes up. What do you do? Do you quit? Mm -hmm. Do you stop? Mm -hmm. You back up? What do you do? You adapt and overcome. Mm -hmm. Whatever the situation, adapt and overcome. Wait on the leader. Seek wise counsel. What's the next step to take? Hey, listen, we were coming in. Like, for example, the young lady that was coming. Hey, look, I'm coming in, but the gate's closed. What do I need to do? What if she couldn't get in contact with nobody? What if she didn't have phone? What if she didn't have phone service? What did she do? Hop the fence. <laughs> get to where you need to get to. Did, she, did he say hop the fence? Yes. Yeah. She's on. <laughs> <laughs> you want to make sure you heard it. Well, run the fence down. You know? Well, what, what about my car? Listen, you got a mission to accomplish. Amen. Go and keep moving forward. That's right. You got to get to the objective. What is the ultimate objective? Revival and break out in Florida. Woo! That it would resonate through the whole United States and beyond. Wow. So we can't get locked in to the small stuff. Mm -hmm. We'll come back later and deal with that, but we got to keep pressing forward. There's a movie that I would like to encourage you guys to watch, but I don't know how you guys deal with certain type of military movies. But there's a movie called Act of Valor. And I literally have used at SWAT um, some clips of it. Because there's orders that are given to go and get this one objective. And all of a sudden, in the forward movement to go do what they were called to do, the lead man who was the best, the, the, the lead captain and his sergeant, they were super close. Their families would send, spend time together. Their kid, well, one of them was just about to have a kid. They were really close. So all of a sudden, they're moving into the building. And all of a sudden, somebody drops a grenade. The captain turns and sees the grenade. He goes and jumps on the grenade and covers it. And the rest of the team looks, but guess what they keep doing? They keep moving. See, for most people, they would stop and tend to the captain. They got to keep moving. Once the mission is done, they can come back mm -hmm. and check on them. And that's what we have to understand. Whatever it is, and let's say, for example, because she's the one that's leading this, Pastor Arabella tells y'all, hey, look, we got to get locked in in this mission. We got to move down range. We got to get to where we need to go to. We got to set things up. We need to cook. She gets all the logistics down. If something happens and Pastor Arabella can't get there, guess what? Doesn't mean it's over. No, absolutely not. You adapt and overcome, move, put somebody else in charge. That's right. Keep rolling. Keep That's going. right. That's right. Amen. That's how this operates. Right. If Apostle Nigel couldn't be here today, guess what? I'd still be here. Right. Amen. Because you still got to get trained. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand that. We can't get in our feelings. We can't get offended. Amen. Let me tell you something about offense. Dead people don't get offended. Mm -hmm. That's right. Come on. If you're supposed to be dead in Christ, Jesus. then how do you get offended? Glory to God. Amen. It's like, for example, this young lady right in front of me with the red sweater. It's not even cold in here. But anyway, <laughs> I was testing your offense button. But this morning, I watched her. And see, I come in and I'm watching the area. I know everything that's going on. I'm scoping it out. And I see she's walking around and she don't have her head cover on. She doesn't have her hat for you civilian people. And she's just walking around. We need to get her a hat. Yes. And a shirt. Yes. So she's she's walking around. She doesn't have her headgear, and I'm I'm like, okay, should I lock her heels now? Because you know, I'm trying to be gentle, I guess. And it's difficult for me. 
But, so I, I just finally in the kitchen, I tell Apostle Nico, I said, uh, I gotta talk to this young lady about this happening. He said, okay, go ahead. So I called Pastor Arabella and I confronted her. Yeah, can you believe that? I confronted her. People don't like confrontation. Mm -hmm. You can never get anything changed if you don't confront it. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. So I did it in love. Did I dishonor you and disrespect you, man? And guess what she did? She said, okay, no problem. She got back here, she put the cover on. See, that's the honorable thing to do. She could have quickly got into her feelings. She could have, you know, did. But it just shows me that there's a level in her life that has died to self. Because the reason why we wear covers is no different spiritual covering. And that's something else I got that I can teach on. You walk around and you don't have no covering, you're just out there. Mm -hmm. You're wondering why your finances are jacked up, your kids don't want to come home, your dog keeps running away, your husband doesn't want to travel with you. It's because where's your covering? Ooh, you need to say that again. <laughs> so it's important. I don't go anywhere where my covering doesn't know. My wife don't go anywhere without letting me know. And we don't run a caveman mentality in my house. Amen. But my wife understands the order of God. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that's why we wear our covers. It's not to mess up your hair or anything like that, but it's because there's a reason behind it. Okay? So that was another part of the military. Number three is the way they refuse to leave another one behind. We never leave someone behind. Amen. Amen. We encourage him. We lift him up. If our brother slips, we go and lift him up. Amen? Amen. So that's, again, it's scripture, but yet the military does it, but the body of Christ doesn't. Mm -hmm. Come that's on. Right. It doesn't sound right, does it? No. The military gets it right. But yet, the ones that are called the followers of Christ don't get it right. Lord, help us. We need to fix it. We want revival? You got to go back and get those ones. As the Holy Ghost leads you. As the Holy Ghost leads you. That's the key thing in everything we do. You've got to be led by the Holy Ghost. Today. Amen. You've got to be led by the Holy Ghost. Don't do it on your own because then you're just long ranger. Mm -hmm. Okay? The way they understand and follow orders. And I know that's difficult for people to follow orders. Yes, it is. Just follow what you're told to do. You might not agree with it. But at the end of the day, you submitted yourself because you heard from God to come under or align yourself. Then follow orders. Because then you can see the mission come to fruition. Mm -hmm. I'll give you another example. When they went to go try to get, uh, or when they went and got Osama, mm -hmm. when they flew that helicopter in on the one side, they went to go over the wall with the chopper because they were going to land it in the compound. Half of that chopper was on one side, half was on the other side. And they dropped half of a helicopter and then with the guys they all survived the other chopper was on the other side they lost total communication they didn't stop the mission they had orders get in the compound they had they had strategically found out where he was at they did all the reconnaissance guess what the one team breached from one side the other team breached from another side still no communication and it's in darkness and they were still able to fulfill the mission because they had trained so well together that they knew each other's movements inside this compound. Well. How much are we willing to train with each other? My, 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 Lord, help us. How much are we willing to say, hey, look, I don't know everything. I'm teachable. Teach me. Yes. Show me. Let's work together. Let's do this. 
Because the end result is the purpose of God, not yours. Mm. I say this and I, I say it jokingly, but it's real. It's not about you, boo. Uh -huh. It's not about you and you getting promoted and getting ranked. Listen, God will do his promotion. Mm -hmm. Because when God promotes you, no man can take you down. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's real key. The way they lay their lives down for one another. Like I told you earlier, that captain threw his life on a grenade. And there's many others, many others that lay their lives down so that the team can get the mission accomplished. But yet we won't do that in the body of Christ. That's why we train in the military format. That's why we do this. Because we want you to understand that when we're out there and we're, we're talking about lives, People coming to the kingdom, people getting to know who they are in Christ, getting to have their minds renewed, their lives transformed, marriages together, breaking cycles. We got to lay everything else aside mm -hmm. because of God's ultimate plan. That's the focus. That's the thing. However, as I see it, the biggest thing is I see the military format as how the kingdom operates. We take territory. For far too long, we were aided on the enemy to attack. Why are we not taking the fight to the enemy? Amen. We've been given all power and authority. Yeah. Delegated power that comes from God. Why are we not using it? Because we can't become one. Lord have mercy. Amen. The SEAL team is the most elite team that the uh, military force has. They don't move unless they move together. Oh God. They don't go and jump into a mission all by themselves. They've learned in, in all those months of training, eight weeks, eight weeks that they spend together, and then after that they go and train for more in whatever the fields that they're going into. And they spend time together. They learn each other. They watch each other's moves. Before you know it, it's like they're just walking as one. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they have a relationship. They're willing to be vulnerable with one another. Not transparent. Because I'm still hiding something if I'm just being transparent. Vulnerable is, hey, look, what you see is what you get. I'm going to be straight up with you. I'm going to tell you whether it hurts you, whether it's not. But at the end of the day, it's because I want you to make it home. Right. Amen. That's right. That's, That's right. That's the thing with the SEAL team. No man left behind. That's, That's right. right. That's their creed. Yeah. We're going to come back together as one. <laughs> Pastor Wes Wesley talked about the Spartans and how they lock shields. Listen. They faced a Persian army. Right. And it was only 300 of them. Right. Yep. Because they worked as one. Mm. They followed one man's voice. That's right. The leader. They didn't try to jump out there and do things on their own. They didn't think, well, they, wait, if we go this way, no. They kept pressing forward as a team. One. As one. That's I need you as much as you need me. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. So what is spiritual warfare? The sons and daughters of God fighting against evil forces. That's spiritual warfare. The sons and daughters of God united as one fighting against demonic forces. I see in a lot of in a lot of churches right now they don't even want to do deliverance. Mm -hmm. And and, I, and let me tell y'all, this might shock you, but it's okay. I understand why they don't want to do deliverance. Why would you want to tackle a demon that you're carrying yourself? Oh. Because they know. Listen, spirits attract spirits. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to try to deliver somebody who they know, wait a minute, that, 
I recognize that spirit because that spirit recognizes me. But why are they not seeing the glory of God? And fear and trembling comes in that spirit. That's why. But it, again, that's spiritual warfare. It's spiritual warfare. So what is the reason, again, for spiritual, spiritual warfare focus, focuses us to see our need and God's gracious care and protection in the battle that leads us to love and have faith in him more. Mm -hmm. Let me read that to y'all again. Spiritual warfare forces us to see our need and God's gracious care and protection in the battle that leads us to love and have faith in him even more. That's what we should do. When we're in spiritual warfare, we understand, look, demons know that you're coming. The land knows that you're coming. Yes. Come on. Does it know that the sons and daughters of God are coming? Oh, the rebellious sons of God are coming. We have to understand who we are in Christ. That's Amen. why it's so key to get the revelation of your true identity in Christ. Mm. We can quote it, but yet are we living it? Can our video match our audio? Oh, wow. Wow. Whoa. Can our video match our audio? Most of y'all are seasoned enough in here. And I say seasoned or classic because I don't want to call y'all old. Okay, that's my terminology. Okay, I learned to respect my elders and I said they're classic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some of us young ones were pre-classic. <laughs> and then there's some of just post-classic. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> But then I talk about being seasoned, okay? And I'm talking about age. Y'all remember those uh, uh, karate movies? Yeah. Where they'd be like, and then they would talk? Yeah. Y'all remember those? <laughs> See, I'm in a good crowd. They still have them? Yeah. Uh, I don't watch those movies. Because <laughs> I probably say it before they say it. But that's what I'm talking because the video is showing them talking, but there's no words. So it doesn't match. So your actions have to match your words. Because, listen, last year, no, in 2019, no, correction, 2021, the most sought out word in Bible Gateway, you know, that's where you find different mm -hmm. translations. The most sought for word was sorcery. So, sorcery. Mm. Not, not scripture, not, you know, biblical terminology, sorcery. Mm. People are hungry for the spirit realm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if we don't manifest the kingdom, then who will? Would you prefer that the next generation have to fight the battle that you already could have won? Yeah, hallelujah. Mm. So it's time for us to take our place, our rightful place, and do the warfare God's called us to do. Mm -hmm. For Florida and beyond. Because again, it's not just for y'all. There's young people that are coming up that I know for a fact are going to ask one day, hey, I remember this thing that hit called COVID. We talking about it at school. What did you do? Mm-hmm. When all the churches closed down, what did you do? They're going to ask. They're going to want to know. Did you fight the battle? Did you stand up for the things of God? Did you make a stand? Whenever they wanted to bring all the agendas in, what did you do? Did you represent God? Because you're telling me you want me to come to church, but what are you doing? Why well, I stood on the wall. 
That's what I expect intercessors to say. Yeah. We stood on the wall. Mm -hmm. Amen. We warred. The war got intense, but we stayed on the wall. There was some that were lost, but we stayed on the wall. We were not movable. We were not shaken. We kept pressing forward. We actually even took land back for the kingdom of God. Mm. That's the history, the legacy that we should leave behind. That now they have substance to hold on to that say, man, they didn't quit. Because listen, one of the biggest things in uh, for the Navy SEALs, they send probably 100, 200 of them go through the training. And there's a big silver bronze bell in the middle. And when you're ready to quit, all they tell you is go hit the bell. Mm-hmm. And they encourage it for you to hit the bell. Mm-hmm. They say less than 10% of who goes through the class doesn't make it. I mean, are the only ones to make it. That's right. That's the intensity. Why? Because they want the best out there fighting in our country. Mm -hmm. They don't want the weak ones. Mm -hmm. So they weed them out. And listen, they've had the best swimmers come in there, most intelligent people. I mean, the best of the best come in, but they don't make it because they can't endure my God. Right. Because it's easier to quit mm-hmm. than to endure. Right. Amen. Right. It's easier to say, yeah. no, nope, I'm not going to do this. This is not for me. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be told. I'm not going to wear BDU. I don't want to dress like that. Mm-hmm. I don't want to wear boots. Mm-hmm. I don't want to wear a hat. What do you mean I got to wear the same shirt everybody else has? I don't want to do that. Listen, I was challenged last night when I took the shirt off. I mean, took the shirt out of the bag. And I see all this gold stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, I I said, this is bougie. (laughs) I was like, oh, Lord, help me. So I'm going to show you a shirt. That someone, because they know my heart and they know what I'm about, they made this shirt for me. And I'm, I'm not, I love the shirt, don't get me wrong. I hope my wife lets me keep it. <laughs> she don't snatch it from me. <laughs> but um, it just kind of threw me off because of the mindset I have. And always in war, I'm thinking, go, oh, that's easily seen. Because it's going to shine. You know? So anyway, that, that was a side note. But this is what was specifically made for me. Oh, oh yeah. Special ops. Thank God. Oh, wow. Yeah. Special, a spiritual warfare. Amen. Awesome. Amen. And, and I just, I don't know, that they said, this is how we see you. And I was like, boy, God's showing you something. <laughs> but uh, that's, that's the mindset I have because I understand that I have to fight and war for lives. God gave his best, so I got to give him my best. He didn't slack off when it was time to send somebody. He didn't send Michael. He didn't send Gabriel. He sent his son. Exactly. So there is, I have to begin to look at it. Man, he sent the most valuable one he had. Wow. So I have to give him the most valuable thing, and that's myself. Wow. Because I'm in his image. Yes, that's right. Listen, listen. Get ready for the seven. Oh, they're already there. Okay. You have to begin to realize this one thing. That God chose you to put himself in. Yes. Mm. The Bible says that the deity of God, I don't know, I started looking into that, and I'm like, That's his very essence. All of his DNA resides on the inside of me. He literally, Apostle Nijo, he doesn't like to, like coffee, I I like to put a little cream and a little sugar. Anybody like to do anything like that? Mm -hmm. Some of y'all put that bougie cream called French vanilla (laughs) and all that. I don't go that far. But he likes it straight black. He said, just give me coffee. 
But I started picturing what this infusion is all about. And the best way, this is how I can describe it. It's like you taking regular coffee and putting creamer in. It doesn't stay the same color, can it? Does it? Can you separate the colors back again? That's how God is in us. He doesn't separate himself. God wants to walk with you. He wants to talk to you. He wants you to listen. Yes. And sometimes as the intercessors, we just want to keep talking, and keep talking, and keep talking. Mm -hmm. And listen, he talks about a great anointing that we need to carry. Sit down, shut up, and listen. Mm -hmm. Just imagine if we could just sit down, shut up, and just listen. How much more intel we would get from God. But we just think we need to... God, you need me to help you. Yes. You need me. Mm -hmm. And God's like, Jesus, did you just hear what she said? <laughs> Jesus, do I really need her? I want her, but Jesus, I don't need her. you got to understand that. So I just want to give you these seven pillars. And to me... It is the seven pillars to become a special ops intercessor. So the first one, as you can see it up there, is obedience. Well, you, she's going to put up all seven. Obedience, humbleness, integrity, submission, honor, unity, and the greatest of all love. is love. Wow. Wow. Right now, Within the body of Christ, if you say this, people leave the church. Yes. Obedience. Wait, wait a minute. You ain't my daddy. Right. Submission. You ain't my mama. Integrity. Uh, you don't even know my business. Okay. So, and I'm going to back them up with scripture. Ain't that the way we should do it? Yes. All right. I'm glad y'all want scripture. I'm going to give it to you. Exodus chapter 19, verse 5. I apologize, it's hard to see. Now you must be careful to obey me and my covenant with you. Then you will belong to me as my special people. The whole earth belongs to me, and I have chosen you from among all the nations. He's asking us to obey him. And to obey those that he's appointed over us. Oh, wait a minute now. I can obey God, but <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I don't know about that. Obey somebody, another human. Let me tell you what God has shown me in that. When you can't obey those that are appointed over you, it shows me your relationship with God. That's right. The Bible tells us to judge the fruits. Your lack of obedience to an appointed leader shows me your lack of obedience to what God tells you to do. Amen. I know that was a little deep, but it's okay. You'll be all right. <clears throat> Humbleness. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4 says this. In the way... That you live. Do not just try to help yourself. Do not be proud. Instead, respect other people. Think about other people as more important than yourself. Yes. Listen, that's against all the American way. Because yes. it, it, it's not about you thinking about somebody else. Mm -hmm. Okay? Verse 4, do not think only about the thing that you want to do for yourself. Each of you should think also about how you can help other people. When you're willing to die to yourself and say, you know what? I know that I got to get up early because Pastor Arabella told me I need to be on my post. Okay. Without griping and complaining. Because if you if you complain, you're going to remain. Mm. No whining. 
There shouldn't be no whining intercessors. And I know y'all thinking, oh, but I, I like to cry when I'm with the Lord. That's fine. But you don't complain about what God has given you to do. Right. Yeah. Right. You don't whine about it. Right. Mm -hmm. you, you go and you humble yourself. And you go do what you've been asked to do. Because again, it's about the land. It's about the waters. It's about the people. Amen? Amen. So we have to remember, just humble yourself. Think about somebody else. Like I, like I said earlier, it ain't always about you, boo. <laughs> Integrity. Uh-oh. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse... 1 Peter chapter 3, <coughs> verse 16. But when you tell them, be kind and polite, don't only... Do only what you know is right. Then those people will see that you live in a good way mm -hmm. because you believe in Christ. That's right. When they say bad things against you, you against you, they will become ashamed. Mm -hmm. When you get asked to do something and you made the agreement to be there, be there. Be there. It's like, for example, uh, if I'm driving and I'm I'm almost I'm almost to the gate. I won't tell you if you call me and you ask me, "Hey, where are you at?" I'm not going to say I'm at the gate. And I could be maybe just 20, 30 feet from the gate, but I'm really not at the gate. Right. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Integrity is, hey, I'm almost to the gate. Mm -hmm. Or I'm fixing to turn into the gate. Because what if you die and you're 20 feet from the gate? Mm -hmm. Oh, but they told me he's at the gate. So go look for him at the gate. Mm -hmm. It's integrity. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, listen, there's no such thing as a little lie, white lie, mm -hmm. burgundy lie, black lie. Mm -hmm. A lie is a lie. And at the end of the day, you told them you were somewhere that you weren't. So also, if you tell somebody, hey, I'm going to be at that meeting, unless, unless Jesus shows up, you need to be at that meeting. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to be there, then call the leader and say, hey, look, I told you I was going to be there. Some stuff has come up. I can't make it. Call. You notice that? Don't text. It's so easy to text. And you don't know the story behind the text. Amen. But it's something about when you hear the person's voice. Hey, look, I can't make it. I apologize. Forgive me. And don't tell people you're sorry. Your identity doesn't say you're sorry. People tell you you're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now y'all got it, didn't you? Right. <laughs> it's, hey, I apologize. Forgive me. Okay? Remember, there's power, death, and life is in your tongue. Mm. So remember, your word is a part of your integrity. Mm. Be who God says you are. Don't try to be somebody else. Okay? Because it's a lie. You can't pray like Arabella. That's all right. You don't need to. Amen. Pray like you. Amen. Amen. Well, she just hears God. Well, go to the mountaintop for yourself. Amen. I tell people all the time, look, I'm not your God. You can go up to the mountain too. Amen. Stop being lazy. Mm -hmm. Go listen to God for yourself. Go read the word for yourself. Study for yourself. Don't base everything on what I say because I'm not God. I'm simply Ray. Here's the, here's, here's the big curse word in these seven. You ready? <laughs> Submission. So it's a James. I gotta talk to my administrator about those colors. <laughs> I can't always see it. There it is. James chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. It says this So submit to the authority of God, resist the devil, stand firm against him, and he will flee from you. Verse 8 Come close to God. 
with a contrite heart, and he will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify unfaithful hearts. Um, uh, purify your unfaithful hearts, your double-minded people. I want y'all to understand what it says right off the bat. So submit to the authority of God. God has placed Apostle Niju over my life. He is, in my life, the authority of God that I can see in my life. So we have to understand that when God says that, yeah, we know, okay, you gave your life to the Lord. Great. Now let's submit to the one that he has appointed over your life Amen. to spiritually guide you. Hmm. The Bible talks, don't go into war without seeking spiritual counsel, right? Mm -hmm. Well, who are you going to get it from? Somebody who's never been in war? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If you need marriage counseling, are you going to go to somebody who's been divorced 15 times? Mm -hmm. Or someone who's not even married? Mm -hmm. If you need financial counseling, you're going to get somebody who lives in the overdraft? My goodness. You know what overdraft is? Yes. <laughs> okay. No, you're going to go to somebody who knows how to handle money. Amen. That's right. So we've got to understand God puts people in our life that have the flavor that we don't have. And we need them. We want them in our lives so that they can help us. Where I'm weak, I need you to be strong. Amen. When you're weak, God has sent me to help you be strong so that we can fight the battle together as one. Come on. Y'all should have jumped up at that one. That was a freebie. Yeah. <laughs> As what? As, As one. one. Come on. All right. Now waking up, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Here's another one. Honor. Matthew chapter 4, verse 41. Somebody may accept a prophet. Yeah, somebody may accept a prophet into his home because the visitor is a prophet of God. God will bless that person. Like he blesses a prophet. Or he may accept a good man who obeys him. Because the man is good. God will bless that person like he blesses the good man. I like how that's put because we need to understand. God wants to bless you when you honor others. Honor is a currency in heaven. You want currency from heaven? You want intel from heaven? You want to understand the mysteries of heaven? Honor others above yourself. Mm. Honor others above yourself. See, I could have went, and it was time to start. And I could have started. But I needed to wait to the one that I came here and I submitted to, to release what God gave me. I understand honor. There's times I walk in places, and he'll start laughing because he knows how I get because things are not in order and it, it's just and then he'll just he'll look at me and he'll just because he knows we have to understand when we come into somebody's house we honor them see that's that's a key in our land right now as the first nation people because we're the host people of the land this is our land amen and we people have come in and dishonored us we didn't give them authority to do what they did. They thought when they came in that we needed them. Mm -hmm. We didn't need them. Did we want to have a relationship? Did we want to grow together? Yes. But it should have been done in proper order. Mm -hmm. See, I came into this house because I was invited. Other than that, I wouldn't come to the house. Mm -hmm. When there's an invitation, now your gifts and your calling can manifest yes and God can use you but when you just come in with the preconceived idea oh you need me so I'm coming here I'm, I'm God's best just for you God won't use you and we have to understand we got to break that cycle how do we break that cycle is honor one another honor one another lay your life down for somebody else Again, I want to give you another verse with honor. Romans chapter 13, verse 7. So you must give to each person what you ought to give them. Pay taxes 
to the people who receive taxes. Do that for every kind of, of tax. Respect those people that you should respect. Praise people that you should praise. Listen, if someone operates in the fivefold, which is the gifts that God gave to the church, then respect them. Mm -hmm. I know everybody goes around and saying, oh, well, you know, I don't do titles. And I was one of them. I was one that I'm like, nah, I'm just, I'm just simply Ray. Just call me Ray. At the end of the day, my kids didn't call me Ray. Mm -hmm. They called me Poppy, which means daddy. That wasn't my name. That was a title, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So if God gives the gift to the body of Christ of apostles, prophets, mm -hmm. evangelists, pastors, and teachers, then let's recognize them by God's gift. Especially if you see it in manifestation. Mm -hmm. We honor them. That's hard to do, ain't it? Mm -hmm. See, I don't go around calling him, Yo, Nigel. Yo, Holmes. Mm -hmm. And we joke about that, but in public, I don't ever disrespect him. And I don't let anybody disrespect him. Let me tell you something again about that Texas trip. I couldn't go. They first started the trip. They were in Mexico. And he was over in Mexico. I didn't go then. I flew in the next day. They almost took him out. Because they physically just were so consumed by wanting to touch him and, and talk to him. And whoo, we're around a native. And, you know, all this. That he was having a hard time getting out of there. The words out of his mouth was, it was my fault. Because I wasn't there. Why? Because I take care of my apostle. I watch over him. I don't let anybody disrespect him. And guess what? Because I've taken care of him, I have that in my life. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. See, you don't realize that when you sow seeds of taking care of someone else's ministry, yes. God's going to develop yours and he's going to bring people to take care of you. Yes. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm telling y'all, yes. I'm living proof that I literally, at one time in my life, we were in this church and we had this, I don't know if it was a Thanksgiving deal that we did or, or what, but there was like 500 people. And we had uh, different teams for everything. You know how y'all, we do everything logistically. There's a team for the food. There's a team to clean up. There's a team to set the chairs up. All that. So I was part of a specific team. And it was time we were done. My team, listen now. My team was done. So we're sitting there and I'm just waiting on uh, my wife to do finish up what her team was doing. So she looks at me and she says, hey babe, can you go ahead and grab those trash bags and take them outside? Mm -hmm. That's not part of my team. Let that team take the trash out. Amen. I got slapped by my wife and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> That's a hard slap. Yeah. My wife literally looked at me and she said, Ray, are you serious? And I went and I just had, that's good enough for me. I took the bags out, man, and I'm fussing all the way. I did everything I was supposed to do. And when I put the bags in the dumpster, the Holy Spirit got a hold of me and said, take care of another man's vineyard and see what I'll do with yours. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly like, right. Oh. So all the way back, driving back to the house, 60 miles, I wept. Because I realized I had offended God by my actions. Not willing to take care of another man's house. My God. Oh, and it, it broke it off of me. Oh. And the last church that I went to, I literally held, and it was only by the grace of God, I held so many positions. And we had probably about 300 people. But I just took care of everything. You know, and then I developed teams. But I still overseen everything. And now, and I shared it with uh, Jackie and Pastor Wesley, how God has blessed us with a school 
And literally, he's brought the people, and they literally won't let me do anything. Wow. One of my spiritual sons told me, we just fired you. <laughs> <laughs> we need you to get in that office, and it's, a, it's I got a real super cool desk. They said, that's the command center. And we need you in there hearing from the Lord Ooh. and doing what God has called you to do. Wow. And literally, and one, he said the, this past week, he said it one too many times about me being fired. I said, son, remember who's the ultimate firer in the house. <laughs> he said, no, dad, you can't do that. So they won't let me do a whole lot. Yeah. But again, I wouldn't have been able to come here if I had to be back running that school. Yeah. Right. yeah. But God literally right. has brought people. I have an administrator for the school wow. bar, administrator for the impact center, in, in, uh, administrator for Res America. For every ministry, God has literally brought teams. Okay. Why? Because I was willing to humble myself hmm. and honor the man of that house and take care of it. And God has honored me. I'm telling you, God will bless you beyond if you're willing to die to yourself and take care of somebody else's business. Amen? So my last one, before we wrap it up, oh no, I got two more. I apologize. Two more. Unity. Come on. When I talked to Pastor Arabella and she started talking, I said, man, something about her just... It just triggers John 17, but I don't know. I'm going to just keep waiting, keep listening. <laughs> and before you know it, she started quoting it, and I'm like, she, I, I think she did it in a whole different translations and stuff, because she quoted it so many times. <laughs> but it literally, here's, here's what I'm going to rock some of you with. Do you know that the Our Father who art in heaven, what do y'all call that? Abba, Abba Father. No, no, no. Say that louder. The Lord's Prayer. And you know it's not the Lord's Prayer? That's our prayer. Because he said, when you pray, pray like this. This is the Lord's Prayer. What prayer did he pray? That we would be one. That we would walk in wholeness, in unity, as one. That when people see you, they see everybody that you're connected to. That's the way the SEAL team operates. They operate as one. Everybody knows their job. Everybody knows their lane. They don't jump into somebody else's lane unless they're needed to. They train in everybody's lane. So if that person is incapable of fulfilling their part of the assignment, they can step in. See, we just, oh, well, I'm just an intercessor, and that's it. I don't do nothing else. I'll tell you, before I read the scripture, one time at SWAT, we were talking to OTC. It's the officer's training uh, group. And uh, he asked everybody, went through, what's your, what's your gift or your calling? Oh, I'm an apostle. Oh, I'm a prophet. I'm this. And I, you know, they called the fivefold. So I was, I was just a sergeant in the back. I stayed quiet, making sure they stayed awake. So all of a sudden, he turns and says, uh, Ray Ray, what's yours? And I'm like, whichever one of the five he needs me to be. Because if I get locked into one, Amen. and he wants me to evangelize, mm -hmm. I can't tell him, nah, let me call somebody who's an evangelist. Because mm -hmm. I'm an apostle, I, I can't evangelize. Mm -hmm. Or I can't pastor, or I can't teach. Because I'm, no. Whatever he needs me to be, that's what I'll be. Amen? Amen? I understand the gift that I am to the body, but I don't lock myself into that gift. Does that make sense to y'all? Yes. Okay. Unity. Here, I'm going to read it to y'all like y'all don't know it. John 17, verse 20 to 23. I do not pray only for these people. My disciples, I pray also for those people who believe in me because of my disciples' message. Verse 21, I pray that all of them will become united. You, Father, are in me, and I am 
in you. I pray that they also will be united in us. Then, 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 it can't happen until that happens. Yes. Until we're one with God and Jesus through the Holy Spirit, the way we become one, then the world will know. But until we're living it and we're that manifested presence of what unity really looks like, then the world's people will believe that you sent me. I have given to them the great and special gift that you gave to me. Now they can be united in the same way you and I. What's that gift? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. That's the only thing that unites us. It, it's, it's not our color. It's not the race. It's not the gender. It's the Holy Spirit. The ghost that unites you Whoa. and I. That makes the Whoa. people now see one. Yes. They don't see anything else. They don't see color. They don't see yes. gender. They, don't. they see one. kingdom, oneness. Yes. As we are one, then the world will know. That's it. Yes. And Amen. that's what we have to walk in. If you don't get nothing else when you guys leave here from the military format, is that that we're to walk in one accord. Mm. We're to walk in unity. Yes. We're to walk out however the commander, mind you, I didn't say commander-in-chief, because the commander-in-chief is Christ. Amen. But whatever commander is appointed over you, we walk as one. That's why I told Jackie, she talked to me about some land, and I asked her, do you have it written down? Every leader that's leading something should have a vision and a mission, and it should be written out. Make it plain that those that read it can what? Run with it. Habakkuk 2.2. Two. I'm not going to run with you if you don't know what we're doing. I'm not going to go out there and start praying over land if you ain't scouted the land. Mm -hmm. If you don't know who possessed the land before, we've got to know. Amen? Amen? Amen. So it says, the continuation, you and I are united. Verse 23. I will be in them and you will be in me so that they can be completely united. So see, there's no breaking in there. When you infuse yourself to him, he will infuse himself to you. As a result, the world's people will know that you sent me and they will also know that you love my own people as you love me. People are looking for it. I'm telling y'all that people are looking for the remnant that's willing to press through all boundaries to walk as one. Yes. They're hungry for that. There's people in the body of Christ that don't understand it, but yet they want it. Yes. They long for that oneness. Yes. That's why, again, the orphan mindset yes. goes back to the beginning of what I started. That's why the orphan mindset is in place because they think, oh, I'm just out here by myself, I'm just abandoned. And Jesus' blood sealed the certificate of adoption. So there's nothing that can be done to break that seal. And we have to demonstrate that we're one. Yes. Amen. 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 How do we demonstrate that? The next and final pillar. Completion. The number seven. Love. John 13 verse 34 says this. So I give you now a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. For when you demonstrate, listen, it's not just saying I love you. It goes back. Does your audio match your video? Uh -huh. Are you demonstrating love? Demonstrate the same love I have for you by loving one another. Everyone will know that you are my true, what? Follower. They disciples. Know you're not showing it. Mm -hmm. If you're not showing this, mm -hmm. the other six won't fall into place. My God. How do you expect people to follow you if you don't love them? My God. Amen. 
When I started doing the work that God called me to do, there was a time in my life where I hated people. I hated all of y'all. I'm just telling you, it didn't matter what you looked like, who you were, where you came, because of everything that happened in my life. And I told God, I said, you want me to do this? You got to teach me how to love you. Yes, people. yes, yes. Because I can't do it any other way. That's right. And literally, he's given me a love for people to the degree where I lay my life down for them. Why? Because he did it for me. And that's what he says in that scripture. The amount that I have given you, give to others. And then I take it further because he says, and greater works than this shall you do. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to love you greater than what he did. My God. Because he will give me the ability to. Whoa. When I'm choke you out, I'm going to love you. And I'm going to love you so glory, much glory. you can do about it. Because it's a God kind of love. Glory, and glory. That's the only way, guys, that we can be one force. That's the only way you're going to be able to tear down principalities. That's the only way that you can stay on the wall and fight for one another. Is when your love supersedes your own feelings. Mm -hmm. When you're willing to die to yourself and not get offended so easily. Mm -hmm. We have to understand it. We're going to fight because whether you believe it or not, we're all in the fight. Yeah. yeah. That's right. If you're going to win the fight, you got to do it with one another. Because if it only took one person, it would have already been done. Yeah. So we have to understand there's a reason why we do it from the military format. And the rest of the time that I'll have, I'll talk to you more about that. Because I want you to understand that the fight is real mm. and that you need one another. Amen. I need you and you need me. Yeah. I want you to be a part of my life and I want to be a part of yours. Why? Because together we can do greater works. Amen. Yes, Teamwork makes the kingdom dream work. Mm. But it's going to take us operating in one. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm done. Woo! Amen.